Hello and welcome back to Podcast School. This is another video podcast in the series of electronic systems. Today we're going to take a look at the op amp. So I've said here in electronics an integrated circuit and that's also known as an IC. You might have heard it called a micro circuit, a microchip, a silicon chip or just a chip is a miniaturized electronic circuit that has been manufactured in the surface of, and this might be new, a thin substrate of semiconductor material. Now we know a semiconductor is something which conducts some of the time and not, and not other times, um, depending upon external factors. Um, the word substrate is really, a, you could just think of it as a layer, so a thin layer of semiconductor material. Okay, um, so circuits, in other words, microchips or circuits or ICs are really, um, they're devices that have been uh, made in thin layers of silicon. And the layers can be built up and they can be, uh, the different layers can be altered chemically by doing different things to them. Okay, so when we talk about an integrated circuit, that's what we're talking about. Layers of silicon uh, with altered properties chemically. Okay. Uh, I've said there that integrated circuits come in various sizes with differing number of pins. This one's got eight. And, and they said there, one of the most common is an eight pin DIL, and DIL stands for dual in line. And what that refers to is the number of legs, uh, sorry, the number of rows of legs. So there's two rows, uh, so that's dual, and they're in line, so dual in line. So um, you may hear of a, an eight pin DIL. Um, you may hear that like sort of phrase bantered around, you know that that's just an 8-pin uh, IC, just the way that you've probably seen it before with the legs down two sides. Okay, so here is a, a normal layout of an, of an IC, and what, what I want you to notice is just the fact that uh, one pin 1 starts up on the top left, and they're numbered down the left, and then uh, crucially not back up here so not that way but what happens is it goes across to pin 5 and then back up Oop, not a very straight line back up to pin 8 so one is top left down the side across to the right and back up that's how um, they're numbered some people have lots of trouble remembering that um, but hopefully you won't the way to know which one is pin 1 is this black dot okay black dot and there will be maybe a shape like that somehow uh, inserted into the uh, and into the plastic so you always know pin ones beside the black dot uh, I've said there that packages can raise up to or can range to have up to a hundred pins um, and it's also important that you realize that in electronics everything can be made as an IC so just because, um, for example, like the AND gate or the NAND gate or whatever that we studied before, those were just um, packaged into integrated circuits, integrated circuits. But we could have really, if we wanted to, we could put um, a number of AND gates in a circuit, an integrated circuit, along with a number of NAND or ORs or whatever. You mean, we don't have to build up uh, integrated circuits just uh, with single um, types of components in them. We can have mixed um mixed type of devices in there and in fact that's what most uh, modern electronics is it's basically um, the design of these pretty much like the microprocessor is designed on, on an integrated circuit and you can rest assured that it's not just full of ands or nor gates it's it's a complete mixture of different types of devices and uh, signals both digital and analog Um, just said there, these include all the logic gate studies so far. Yeah, I said that already with the discrete single transistors we have already studied. Yeah, okay. Now, here is a picture um, uh, of some integrated circuits. I've shown you this one before, I think, somewhere. Um, but what I just thought I'd to do uh, would be to magnify that up and just have a look at what you might see. So this is uh, what, typically what you would see under a microscope or electron microscope. Um, it shows just the absolute complexity of the, uh, the inside of integrated circuits. You can see different sections, um, different colors, colors corresponding to, um, to different parts of the integrated circuit. You can see that they're sectioned off um, normally by ground uh, 
ground areas so that they're isolated from other areas. Um, just phenomenal amount of um, uh, tracking, copper uh, tracks all over the place, um, all again isolated from the other. Okay, so this is what you might see if you looked at a microprocessor. So part of this, um, I'm, I'm not saying it is for, for sure, I'm not totally certain, but um, the blue, for example, could be just like RAM, so it could be used for uh, just certain storage area. Um, the yellows could be uh, something else, maybe the, the uh, orange areas could be to do with where the main computations are taking place. Um, who knows, but that's the type of thing, it's, it's um, separated off and each part of the microprocessor will do different jobs. Okay, and this is really what I wanted to talk about today. It's the op amp. And I said there that an op amp or an operational amplifier it is, is a device with two inputs and a single output. And there, in fact, is its symbol. A triangle this time. It has an inverting input, which has got a, a minus beside it. You can see that there and a non-inverting input, and that is den denoted by a plus. Now, again, these can be, uh, you know, packaged in hundreds or thousands even within an integrated circuit, integrated circuit. Um, but in the, the most basic configuration, and the one that you might use in school, you'll just find one of these in an 8-pin dill, all right? One isn't uh, used. Two and three, well, that's given by the uh, that's given to the integrated or so the sorry to the inverting input at two. The three three is the inverting or the non-inverting, and six is the output. Five's not used, seven's not used. Eight is the positive supply, and you can see there four is the negative supply. Okay, let's just get into a little bit of the nitty gritty about this. I've given you a formula there, and it tells you what V out is. Uh, and I've said that A is the open loop voltage gain of the amplifier. In other words, this thing amplifies voltages. And it does it in, in correspondence to this equation. What it does is it takes the voltage at, at uh, the non-inverting input you, and the voltage at the inverting input, it takes them away from each other, so the non-inverting take away the inverting, and it multiplies it by a huge figure, um, A, which is the gain. Okay, and I've said there that typically the open loop gain, A, is in the order of 10 to the 5 or 10 to the 6, so a huge number. So any difference, any small difference in the, uh, in the uh, uh, voltages at the non-inverting and at the inverting is um, multiplied up by a huge number so we get a quite a sizable um, V out. In fact, in reality V out tends toward the supply voltages, Okay, the, the, the biggest that it can be in other words. All right. I'll not read that out because you can read it yourself. But the, just the, the, most, co the um, most important thing I wanted to say here that Next year, or in A2, when we come to study some electronics in A2, the uh, op amp will be given um, external components in and, and, uh, terms of resistors. And the resistors will determine uh, the gain of the amplifier. Okay? Um, in all of those uh, situations or circumstances, you will have the voltage at the non-inverting input and the voltage at the inverting input roughly equal. Okay, so this is this equation is probably more useful for later on, but I thought I'd put it in here now. The other important thing is the uh, there's a huge input imp impedance or resistance at the inputs, which means that the current flowing into those non-inverting and inverting uh, inputs are is you, is right down at almost zero. Okay, because of the very large uh, input resistance there. Okay, the last thing I wanted to say today was um, just the fact that the, the op amp is again uh, made up of basically transistors. I've been saying this a number of occasions now, that all electronics is made up of the most basic building block of a transistor, as, a, as we are with cells. And the, uh, the op amp is no... Um, no different. You can see there every single uh, uh, component in there is a transistor. There's a little, there's little capacitors and little resistances, but mostly transistors. 
Okay. Now, you might say, well, could we not make this out of transistors? Well, just single transistors, not really. It'd be extremely complicated. And plus, all the wires that you would use would add to resistances and, and throw the whole thing out. But if this is laid down properly in silicon on a substrate, then we will have the... Uh, the function that we need in terms of the op amp and you can even see look it's got the non-inverting input there at three uh, something called an offset null which we haven't spoken about um, it's got the supply voltage and it's got an output and there's the inverting input okay so that just confirms that reconfirms really my point that everything is made up of transistors okay that's it for now any questions remember email me at info at podcastschool.net and uh, as well don't forget, if you're watching online, some of this might be a bit blurry, especially the, some of the more detailed slides. The best thing to do is to subscribe and have all this content delivered into your, uh, your reader, which probably could be iTunes. Uh, that's what I recommend. Okay, that's it for now then, so I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.